basically this whole build, frankly, has been a shit show. And I think that's why I am so, I am almost more excited for how this race went than how the Olympics went, as crazy as that sounds. Just because I feel like the lesson that I took away from this build is like everything can go to hell in a handbasket and somehow we can still like put something really cool together um, by just like going at it and working as hard as we can with what we had. So basically like the ribs aside, which was obviously one of the defining things of the build that really impacted a lot, but like mentally after the games, I was not in a great place. And so because of that and having to take, we like came right off the games, tried to go straight into a build and Loki, I like crashed super hard. Like basically that first week in September was the first time that we were like, we probably need to pull out of New York. Um, that was a very frank conversation with John, with my agents about like, I was mentally not doing well. I went back to Wisconsin. I was not running for a bit. I just needed to like mentally recharge. And we had to like, we spent a couple days being like, okay, like we've got to see if this is actually going to happen. And luckily like, just kind of recharging, getting out of the whole mix of stuff. I was able to be like, okay, like I'm ready to do New York. I'm ready to train. This might not be a great build. It's going to be short at that point. We were seven weeks out. And so it was like, crap, like this is going to be really short now, but let's try and see what we can make of it. And so we get into the build. It's going well. Mileage is getting back up there. I'm excited finally to train again. And then a month out from New York, I sustained an acute injury, which resulted in the fracture of my 11th and 12th rib on my right side. Um, a week after that, I actually fell really hard during a training session and I sustained major whiplash along my left side. And so <laughs> and that was like, at that point, it just went to like absolute hell in a handbasket. I could not do anything. It was some of the most excruciating pain I've ever been in. And like tons of kudos to my, my physios that I work with out in flag that they were able to like get me to the point where I was able to train again. Cause like every run hurt, every step hurt, every breath hurt. And it was really this like terrifying thing of like, okay, physically I do not know if I can even do this. And John was really not hot on me doing it. There were multiple times where he was like, we have to pull out. We cannot do this. You cannot do this. And luckily it was far enough out and we were able to get good enough treatment on it that I was able to get to the point where I could realistically run on it. But that was the worry. It wasn't even like, can I train on this? It's just like physically, can I even like do runs right now? Um, and it was just getting to the start line being like, okay, like everything has been a mess here. We've missed a ton of workouts. We've not gotten in the kind of build that I want to, but we have to like mentally just reset and be okay with this being whatever it's going to be. And despite everything, somehow this race turned out like so much better than I could have even imagined. So I'm like, I am so excited about how New York went just because it was like, there were so many times throughout the build where we just didn't even think we were going to make it to the line. So wait, there's a part of it too, where it's like, you wanted to race this thing really bad. I mean, if, if so many people are telling you like, this isn't smart, we shouldn't do this. Why did you insist on, 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 on continuing to push to race? Um, I think part of it is, so once I was able to get, there were points where I didn't want to race, I would say probably, three weeks out or so, um, I like, I was just in so much pain. I couldn't do anything. I missed two days that week. And so that's the thing I was still trying like fully to train on this. And I missed two days that week where I just physically could barely get out of bed because I couldn't sleep either. It hurt to lay down at that point. Um, and once I was able to get to the point where like, I can handle a lot of pain. Um, but if I, if it's like inhibiting my movement, I don't want to do it. And so once I was able to get to the place where I wasn't physically like inhibited, even if there was pain, I was like, I can run this. I want to run this. This is really meaningful to me of like, it's, I was looking at it as my first real major. Um, my whole family was going to come out to see it. And we had invested a lot. It was overcoming that like initial, like really deep dip 
after the games of being able to come out of that and finally get excited to train again. I was like, I overcame all that and I'm not going to let this like inhibit this, but John was super not hot on it. And so I would say probably the last workout, the last real workout that we had going into New York, John was out in flag and we actually like had it out at that workout, like kind of yelling at each other afterwards. And then it got to the point where we were both just crying because it was like us really deeply talking about like, why do I want to do this? Like I needed John to support me in that. If I felt like I was physically going to be able to go out and do it. Um, And kudos to him that he puts a lot of trust in me to be able to make those kinds of decisions as well. And that's what it is. It's that partnership of just like, I needed him to be fully behind me if I was going to do this. And I'm sorry if that's kind of like a roundabout way of talking about it, but I don't know. It was just this deep down, like feeling like despite everything that happened in the build, I knew I was fit and I knew I was ready to run relatively fast. And John was kind of very hesitant having seen the worst aspects of the build and being like, I don't know if you can run faster than 231. I don't know if you can finish this. I don't know if you can hang with the front group. And I was like yelling at him. I'm like, I know I can run faster than that. I know that I can go out and compete and I want to go out and compete for a podium spot. And I need you behind me in that. And that's so obviously kind of coaching styles has been in the news of late in particular. Um, and, and, you know, it sounds like we got kind of a little bit of a peek into that, both kind of the collaborative and the, for lack of a better term, combative. <laughs> um, so what is, you know, both in this build and just in general, you know, how do you and John approach that coach athlete relationship? Um, yeah. In a way that's I, sustainable and successful. I think like I truly believe like I would never be where I am right now without John as my coach. Like he is the reason that I am here. And I think part of that is because John is very keyed into the mental side of all of this. It's always been that way. It's almost sometimes like the physical training takes backseat to mentally being ready and mentally being invested. Um, because I think he's been really good throughout all of this of listening to me of where I'm at and then forming the training around that. So it was when I was mentally not okay after the games, it was a matter of like, okay, we're going to take a step back from training. We're not going to try and force workouts right now because you mentally cannot do this right now and you're not ready to, and we're going to dig into a deeper hole. Um, and then I think it's just, it's been this partnership of like the push pull of John is a little bit more conservative. I am very hard headed. And so being able to come meet somewhere in the middle is what's able to keep me healthy, but also keep me pushing forward. And I respect so much that John is willing to cede some of that power over. Um, whereas I don't think there's many, if any other coaches in the country that really do that. The only other coach that I've met that really does that is Matt Sparks, who was my coach in college. Um, and just this lack of ego and trust in the athlete to take ownership over their training. But then in like, conversely, that means that the athlete needs to take ownership. And if things go wrong, you have to take responsibility. You can't blame the coach because it's like, if John gives me that power and something happens, a mistake is made, it's just as much my responsibility 